Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Savannah J. Goins, author of The Gwythinian and The Crevabanian. And today I have with me Ingrid Nordley, who is my cover artist for the new cover designs. Ingrid, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad to have you on my channel and to be able to ask you some questions that my audience is wondering about, about the cover design process. And I'm so excited to be able to share your knowledge with them. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Um, my name is Ingrid Nudley. I'm 24 years old. I'm from Norway. Um, I'm a self-taught artist, uh, mainly in uh, digital art. And uh, I have two pets. I have Serika, the cat, and Cappuccino, the hamster. I love those names. Those are so cute. <laughs> How did you come up with the name Serika? Uh, well, I adopted her from uh, a rescue uh, place, and mm -hmm. uh, her name then was Erika or Erika. Yeah. And I like to have. S in my cat's names. So I just added an S in front. <laughs> oh, that is so cute. So a quick intro about how I heard of you. I found you when um, Brittany Wang and Bethany Atazada were doing their Save the Cat experiment, um, the Save the Cat outlining method experiment on YouTube. And you created some really awesome fan art for that um, book that they kind of that we all kind of plotted together with them and that was the first time that i saw your talent and then i saw a piece of fan art that you made for britney and i was like oh my goodness this is so amazing and beautiful i need to find out who this person is and she needs to make some character art for me <laughs> so i ended up being able to find you through instagram and i commissioned you to make some characters for me and i'm going to show everybody real quick um a little piece of art that a fan made for me featuring the characters that you did and it's a light box it lights up how cool is that so it's really ingrid, cool ingrid created the let's see here we go the dragon and both of my human characters and my squirrel character here verita meek she did all of those just based off of a couple of descriptions i provided and i had a couple of sketches for some of them because i kind of knew what i wanted them to look like so I had such a great experience working with you on the covers that when I had the opportunity to get new cover art done, you were the first person I thought of. And I am so, so glad that you ended up being able to work with me on those. Um, but you hadn't had a lot of experience doing covers before. And my friend Holly Davis at Write Holly Davis has a question for us about that. She says, how much did you have to troubleshoot to tweak the covers since we were both kind of new to this process? When it comes to technical stuff to a few tries, I think, um, learning exactly how to export it, um, making making sure the resolution is high enough. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of little things that I just didn't know <laughs> mm -hmm. how to fix when it was a problem or really how to tell what to do. Uh, so it was a lot of googling and finding <laughs> these exporting guides and uh, cover creation guides especially for like ingram spark in this case mm -hmm. so I, I think we figured it out in the end though <laughs> yes you did a great job you figured everything out in the end even if it took a little bit so i really appreciate you finding all those things out because um, i would have had a hard time trying to figure those things out myself so that was really awesome okay so now i want to show you guys the covers that we ended up with so the this is the old style of cover and now underneath we have this amazing art that Ingrid made for me. So this is also the new paperback design and we have the gorgeous spine here and the back cover. We're going to talk some more about that in a second. Um, and then I'll show you the second book. This is the old style. This is still going to be on the outside uh, when you order a hardcover, but these new ones will be the only kind of paperbacks that you can get anymore because they're so beautiful. So what do you guys think of these covers? Aren't they gorgeous? Oh my goodness. I love them so much. I love being able to see how cool they look next to each other. So fun. So when I commissioned you for the character art and for the covers, I sent you lots of descriptions and some images and lots of ideas of what I wanted them to look like. But my friend Stephanie Moreau wants to know, 
how difficult is it to work with non-visually creative people or people who may not know exactly what they want it to look like? Um, it's not too different from any other individual who has more and maybe a more visual um, image in their head. Um, usually what I usually go for, if it seems like the person aren't really able to tell exactly what things look like or kind of imagine uh, maybe angles or like composition or uh, facial expression or anything like that. I usually go and ask uh, what is the mood or the atmosphere or what is the feeling that you kind of want to evoke with the illustration and then I kind of take it a bit from there because then you start to narrow it down a little bit. Yeah. And then the next step would be you would send um, like a sketch of an idea, right? Yes. And then you'd see what they thought, what they like about that, what they don't. And with those sketches, those are things that technically people aren't really supposed to show other people, right? That's kind of a private thing between you and the artist. Yeah, the way I kind of feel is like for writers, they don't really like to share the first draft and I don't really like to share my first sketch. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also not actually selling the sketch, I'm selling a finished illustration. Mm -hmm. So if I want to use the sketch for anything, whether it's to show progress or anything like that, then it's in, they can ask at least. <laughs> yeah. And I would probably say yes, but I uh, would like to know about it beforehand. Yeah. So it's just more polite to check with you first before just going and showing it to people. I do think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a good thing to know because I didn't know that at first. So definitely a good thing to know. OK, so along the same lines about what a cover will look like and why, Shelly, who is also at Farron Amethyst, says, when choosing the design itself, what is the best design that will make your book stand out? And she says, for example, did you take into consideration the styles of cover art of books in the same genre that have come out recently? Mm, in this case, you knew exactly what you wanted, so there wasn't a whole lot of deliberation on uh, what to do. Um, but I think in most cases, uh, people do want their books to kind of follow along with their genre. So for like, in general, that's probably a good idea. And I do think your book kind of fits with the fantasy genre, mm -hmm. uh, because it has this mysterious feeling. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's also quite minimalistic, which I think adds to that uh, what is this about kind of feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it makes the person who sees it more curious and more ho hopefully want to pick it up and read it more. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have another question from Shelly and she says, is the artist paid once for the design or does it depend on how many copies are sold? Uh, I take payment once and that's that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think especially for indie authors, it's not really much feasible to start worrying about royalties for artists. Yeah. Um, it's and for artists as well. It's as a whole like a lot of work to be done to have like a proper contract about that and figure out the exact percentage of royalties. And there's just a lot of things that's not really necessary. I think. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely appreciate being to pay you want being able to pay you once and then being done because it would be so difficult to keep track of, you know, always making sure I give you a percentage of mm -hmm. everything that sells with the cover on it. So I think it's definitely a good idea to, you know, pay once. But you also want to make sure that you have in your contract that that is what you're agreeing to, because if mm -hmm. you are not if you don't clarify that. Um, you know, between each other with a contract, there could be, you could run into problems later where if you haven't bought the full rights from the artist, um, you might not be able to, you, you might need to purchase more rights from them before you like print it on a t-shirt or print it on a poster or on a bookmark or something like that. So you want to make sure that you have a contract that says that you have full rights to it um, before you start printing it in other places. Yeah, I think a lot of artists, um have like levels of prices depending on what you actually want to use it for. Mm -hmm. So yes. yeah, for commercial work, there's probably a little add on on the price. Mm -hmm. in, 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 if uh, then when it's just for uh, personal use or just social media kind of things. Right. And then also sometimes contracts can get 
um, more complicated or more in depth with lots of different things, you know, being very, very specific. But what we had in ours was just in my invoice. When you sent me the bill, um, what I was agreeing to was just in the invoice. So that's a really, you know, simple way to take care of that. And I liked, I liked that it was simple, but depending on who you work with, you know, different artists have different methods of doing that. Mm, yeah, it's definitely a lot of ways to go about it. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really loved about working with you was being able to get the P and G's of the pieces, you know, the different pieces of the cover. So, um, I asked Ingrid when I did the, when we did the character art, I asked her to have the characters with a background, which I'll have my editor pop up on the screen real quick here. You can see the characters with the background, but then I also asked to have the characters just by themselves as a PNG with no background so that I could put them together on a background and I could manipulate and make different kind of like different scenes with them all together or with different ones. And I've had a lot of fun with that. You can do that for free in Canva. You can get um, images off of Unsplash, like a forest scene or something like that. So I would get like pictures with trees and then put all the characters in together. And I'll flash one of those up on the screen now too. So you can see how cool that looks. It's really fun to be able to do that. So I like to make sure that I, I like to make sure that I let the artist know about that because um, it's easier if the artist knows beforehand and can you explain why that is, Ingrid? Um, because if you don't know about it, they, it can happen that they either merge layers, making it so that there is no easy way to get in a transparent background, or they simply are just an artist that likes to paint on one layer. Mm -hmm. So they kind of have to know about it beforehand so they can avoid doing that because there's a lot of work to cut out properly and a character or anything like that. Right. Especially if there's a lot of tiny details, it's mm -hmm. nearly impossible to do it like as good as it could have been if they knew beforehand. Right. So you can save money and your artist's time by asking them about that beforehand and clarifying whether that's something that they can do rather than asking them later and then, you know, them having to go back through and, you know, do that the harder way or, you know, and potentially charging you more for it. Because, I mean, you should pay them more for their time if they're having to go and do that. That shouldn't be something you just expect to have if you haven't discussed it beforehand. You need to make sure you clarify that in your contract. Yeah, it's very important. Yes, but then back to the PNGs. Um, I asked Ingrid to give me the um, this image right here as a PNG without a background. So without like the without the black of the cover, um, just to have that by itself and also of the dragon so that I can place those on different images, also using Canva um, and, you know, make different images for ads or different images to post on Instagram or just share around because it's a really cool piece of art. And I love being able to make it, you know, more than just one piece of art. I can make it into lots of different things by, you know, putting different pieces together. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about more about your background, Ingrid. Tell us when you first discovered that you liked to draw. Um, I mean, I, I think I've always been drawing ever since I was like just given pen and paper as a child. I used to remember that when I was very little, I had to wait for my parents at work and uh, I usually just got a napkin and a pen and then I just drew on that all day <laughs> and I think ever since that I just kind of continued to develop it. I don't think I started to actually want to learn um, to draw properly until I was like 12 which is 12 years ago. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's really cool. All right so you've been taking art more seriously for the past 12 years and how have you what have you done to grow your art and become a better artist? Um, primarily it's been YouTube videos, um, there's a ton of uh, drawing tutorials, there's a ton of speed paintings, which you can learn a lot if you pay attention to, because they usually go from sketch to finished in those speed paintings. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's always, I'm always liking to try new things, um, keeping it fun. <laughs> um, everything from oil and acrylics to watercolor and colored pencils. Um, that's mainly what I've been doing. And of course, photos that is looking at real life photos to draw from them and learn about light and values and colors and all that. Yeah. 
but you did this art for me as digital art. And how, how does that differ from the other arts that are, I don't know what you call the other ones, physical arts or, you know, just the, the not, not on the computer. Art is usually <laughs> the term used. Okay. Um, uh, there's a few things. Uh, for one, it's uh, digital art can look very mm -hmm. fake in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, with traditional art, you usually get like the grains of the paper or or um, uh, the brush strokes you can see in paintings. Uh, in digital art, you don't necessarily get that, so it can look uh, very digital. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so. It took some time to learn how to make it look organic and to try and, in a way, imitate traditional art. Uh, but in a lot of ways, there's a lot of benefits of digital art, uh, which I really like. Um, you have layers, <laughs> yeah. uh, which means that you can try things. And if it doesn't work, you just delete that layer and you go back to like a save point. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you can erase completely, which mm -hmm. you can't really do in any other traditional medium. Right. So there's a lot of benefits and you also have every color imaginable. <laughs> yeah. That's so the, and a lot of uh, tools that just helps um, make the process a bit faster and easier once you actually get the hang of it. Yeah. And you learned all of that just from YouTube, not from taking classes in it? Uh, no, I've never taken a drawing class. <laughs> Yeah, that is so cool. I have taken drawing classes and, you know, I'm obviously nowhere near the level of artistic skill that you have. But for our listeners, I just want you guys to know, like when you when you're pursuing the arts, you don't necessarily have to have a degree in it to be good. And I'm certainly not saying that a degree is worthless or anything like that. It's great if you have one. But if you're not able to get one or your degree is in, you know, something completely unrelated to art, you can still learn so much for free online through YouTube, through blogs. So don't limit yourself and say that you couldn't be a writer or you couldn't be an artist because you can't afford to go back to school or because you, you already have gone to school and your degree is in um, you know, marketing or something unrelated, you can still absolutely learn so many things and get so good just from these um, these methods online, which I love so much. Ingrid is a great example of that. <laughs> look at this. They're so beautiful. So beautiful. You wouldn't look at this and think, oh, this, this person must have been self-taught, like with like a negative connotation or something. These are obviously very professionally done. And um, yeah, so I'll get off my soapbox about that. But Okay, so now that you've worked with several clients, what is something that, like, the best thing an author can do to be a pleasure to work with? Uh, clarity and honesty mm -hmm. usually goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I would say I would value those the highest, I think. Um, if you're not clear, it's really difficult for uh, me or, or any artist to actually get down on paper what you see in your head mm -hmm. because we have no idea what the client sees in their head <laughs> right um so clarity is really important especially if you are very uh, specific about details and such mm -hmm. uh, and uh, honesty is in the sketch phase when I, I i give the client like oh here's kind of what it can look like and if they're not actually honest about everything, then it's not going to get any better once the illustration is finished, <laughs> because I do follow the sketch that I have. Right. So if if there's something you don't like about a sketch an artist sends you, it is better to just tell them and not worry about hurting their feelings or something, because as it mm -hmm. progresses, if you tell them to leave it as it is and that you like it as it is, you're going to probably be bothered by whatever little thing you don't like more and more as the, the drawing progresses. And then it's going to be harder and harder to fix. And, you know, it could be a huge waste of time for your artist if you're not just completely honest about it, because you're you're not going to hurt their feelings and, you know, it's not going to hurt their feelings. It's going to just be so much so much better and less stressful if you're just honest and clear from the beginning. Yeah, and I, I like, if I give someone some an art that I worked really hard on, I thought it was what I wanted, and then I get the feeling that they're not entirely happy. Like, I do feel really, really bad <laughs> because right. I want to make something that I actually like, but I can't do that if they're not telling me what it is that I want. 
Right. So as as you make a um, a critique or you make you let them know something you'd like them to change, make sure you also mention the things that you do like about it, because one, that's just a nice thing to do as a human being. And two, you want to make sure that as they're changing something you don't like, they don't end up also changing something you did like and then have to go and redo it again. You know, so mm -hmm. make sure you point out the things that you love about it. I like to start with those things, especially like whenever I'm critiquing anything, no matter what it is, I definitely like to start with things I like about it and then mention the one or two couple things that need to be fixed and, you know, say how you want them to be fixed. Like I don't just say, I don't like this thing or say, this doesn't look realistic. Mention why, and, you know, so that the artist has some direction. Like if you say like, I don't like his arm, his arm looks funny. I mean, why does it look too muscular, too skinny? Like, does it look backwards? Like obviously it's not gonna look backwards, but you know, <laughs> something that you can say just to be specific and help the artist have direction to know what to do. Cause they, they want to give you what you want. You just mm -hmm. have to understand exactly what that is. Yes. So along the same lines, what is the most annoying or detrimental thing that an artist can do? Would it be not being clear or is there something else that is just really, really awful? Something that you maybe have experience with that is just not a good experience? Um, I haven't had a lot of bad experience so far, which I'm very happy about. Yeah. Like all my clients have been like when I do ask for it, they do um, tend to give me all the information that I need. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, um, but I think like very, very short descriptions are very hard to work with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, often clients also, uh, this has happened with portraits, especially mm -hmm. because when I do portraits and they don't actually tell me anything about the clothing, I usually mm -hmm. just do bare, um, like yeah, upper shoulders and neck. But then they kind of, I kind of heard that, oh, but I want clothes. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of had to go back and add that on. So there's like little things that uh, could be clearer sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so lack of information is uh, a bit time consuming uh, and uh, should like get all the information at the sketch phase. Uh, because it is a bit hard to go on to a finished painting and add on things because then you have to worry about new shadows on the skin and everything like that. Right. Yeah. So the best thing is just to be con clear, concise and honest from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And try to remember what it is you want on the character. <laughs> yes. Um, like I understand kind of forgetting sometimes, um, but at least like, when you actually, at least when you see the sketch, it's very nice if you just take some time and maybe let it sit for a day or two so you are sure that you get everything in at once. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and if there's something that you're not sure about, letting it rest, like you're describing, is really helpful. Mm -hmm. But you can also ask your artist if it's okay for you to share it with a couple of friends mm -hmm. um, and have, you know, not that you're sharing it on Facebook or something, but have like a couple of friends, you know, two or three trusted friends that won't leak it or anything because it's still a secret at this yeah. point. Um, and ask them to just help you be like, you know, is it is it just me? Because sometimes when you're when you're looking at an art that you've commissioned, but it's like it's coming from your imagination and you're like, I thought that I knew exactly what I wanted. Then you see it and you're mm -hmm. like, ah, oh. you know, it just, it's a whole, it's a whole new thing to actually see somebody creating your art for you. And sometimes you can be unsure whether it is what you want or not. And sometimes if you just ask somebody to, you know, take a look at it with you and, um, you know, help you decide if it's exactly what you wanted, then that can be really helpful. Yeah. And usually I don't mind people sharing their sketches with family and friends. It's okay. more when it's in public <laughs> and okay, social cool. media. It's, it's just if you're posting to your following or something like that, that's the situation. Yeah, because then okay. it's uh, beyond just like, uh, like sharing with friends and family don't really matter to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's more what are kind of shown publicly that is my work. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. And then can you also tell us what is your favorite part about creating art for clients? Mm, I think a huge part that I have discovered that I really, really love is that I am kind of forced to draw out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, because when I'm just drawing for me, I tend to choose uh, similar looking faces, uh, same kind of hair, uh, mm -hmm. especially the same kind of 
pose and angle of the face because I'm more comfortable with a certain angle of a face rather than others. Mm -hmm. uh, and also having to draw just, so having to draw for clients a huge uh, array of different looking characters have been really, really helpful and I've felt like in just like half a year I learned a lot more than I have yeah. in a long time just because I've been having to force myself to do things that I normally wouldn't draw. Mm -hmm. So I feel a lot more confident in drawing as well right now. Yeah, and that makes you an even better artist to hire, which I'm telling you guys all that you should hire Ingrid to make art for you. Um, her contact information is below in the um, description and you should definitely email her or send her an Instagram DM and ask her about um, how much time she has open for commissions because uh, she's probably going to be booking out because she's getting super popular with all of her art that she's doing. So make sure you get in touch with her as soon as you can so that you can get a spot because I had such a great experience working with Ingrid and she got some stuff done for me really fast because I found out about the opportunity I had for these covers uh, like a month before I needed to get them done because it was free to upload the new files on Ingram Spark until March 31st. So I really wanted to upload them for free. So I found out about it in February and she was able to get all this art done for me really quickly on a tight schedule to be able to upload this. And um, I've worked with some artists who are extremely slow at getting things back, who I've had a contract with and we've outlined things and you know, there's it's been like very clear when I need something by and I have not gotten those things on time, but that has not been a problem with Ingrid. She's great about getting everything on time. So you have no worries and you should definitely contact her about commissions. So once again, the best way to get a hold of Ingrid is either her Gmail below, or you can check her out on Instagram, see some other art that she's done for people there. And she has a website in the works and you'll be able to find that on her Instagram once it goes live. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any other questions for me or Ingrid. You can drop those in the comments below and please give this video a like if you found this helpful and stick around for more great content for um, entrepreneurial artists and writers on my channel. And let me know if there's another similar topic to this that you'd like me to make a video about because I definitely want to hear from you guys and make the kind of content that you want to see. All right. Until next time, have fun making things happen. Bye.